Hey guys, I'm Lawrence from Howard Cosplay and today I'm going to show you guys how to make Bakugo's neck piece. So these are the patterns from my shop for the neck bracers. So what you will need for this project is a sharpie, utility knives, thick or small, and some needles to pin down the foam. That's all you need. So I'm going to start by pinning down the pattern and tracing it with a sharpie. These are all the pieces for half the neck bracer. But before I cut my pattern, I'm going to mark the edges that are not beveled. I actually messed this part up, so I'm going to go back to the files and update them so that these edges are clearly labeled. When working with beveled edges, I like to separate the patterns into individual pieces. This allows me to maneuver and then cut them out easier. So once that's done, let's sharpen our blades and get ready to cut. I usually go with the Harbor Freight snap blades because they're cheaper and I didn't think they'd make a difference. However, I found that the Ulfa brand from Home Depot are actually a lot better and provided a lot cleaner cuts. So these are the blades I use now. So now that I'm ready to cut these edges, I want to make sure my blade is tilted inwards and I'm ready to cut. Carefully follow the edge of the pattern. I know these cornered edges or sharp turns are harder to do, but just try your best. If that sharp turn wasn't as clean, don't worry, we can always come back for the Dremel. But for now, let's move on. Here I'm using a thinner blade because it has less resistance when cutting curves. So these are how the bevel edges should look like once you're done. And that's the edge that's not beveled. Now we just have to do that for the rest of the pattern. But for this particular piece, I'm going to show you guys how to cut it and we're going to add the valley to the back of the foam. So once that piece is cut out, we're going to use the pattern and mark the darts on the back of the foam. I use a straight edge to mark the darts for my valley to be created. So the important part here is create a beveled cut on either side of the line that we just created. And don't cut all the way through. We'll make a cut on the other side, and that's how you make a valley. So that's how a valley looks like. So I actually cut a little bit too deep, so when I bent the pieces together, it actually teared the edges up. That's not an issue, you can always fix it with some contact cement or super glue later. That's just more work though. Now to cut out these holes, I actually used a brass rod which I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I used the edge of the brass rod and sharpen it with my utility knife. This creates a sharp edge for the brass rod to cut out the holes. And with the edge sharpened, I push into the foam like so with my brass rod. So that's just one way to make holes in foam. And that's it, that's all you need for one half of the neck bracer. Now we'll just have to do that for the other side. So for this other half, I'm not going to use a utility knife. I'm actually going to do something I haven't done before, which is to cut a 45 degree bevel on foam with my bandsaw. So let's go try that out. Here I'm going to adjust the bench to a 45 so I can get that bevel. Okay, and let's do this. So I used a bandsaw because I thought this corner would be easier to make, but I realized this process has its own challenges. So the cuts are okay, I'm a little bit less impressed than I want it to be. And I quickly realized there are a number of problems, such as conserving the bevel and or fitting the pieces into the armhole. So for this particular project, I think it's better that I just stick with a utility knife. So I ended up cutting up the rest of the pieces with a utility knife. So this is the new valley I made compared to the old one. If you do it right, this is how the bend is supposed to look like. Now I'm going to use a heat gun to heat seal it and shape up the foam. Here I'm using a Dremel to clean up that corner that I was talking about earlier. Now I just have to brush on the contact cement to the edges and let them dry before I assemble. The contact cement I use here is actually kind of old, so I use some lacquer thinner to thin it out. So 
So the first thing I put together is the valley. Then I start with the outer piece and glue it together starting with this corner. This part is going to require some push and pull and a little bit of patience. Here I'm smoothing out the edges with my fingertips, like so. The last piece you put together is always going to be the hardest, but just be patient and you'll get it down. And that's how you make one half of the neck bracer. Now we just have to do that for the other side. So here's one side of the trim properly glued together. So here I actually got some funny results because I beveled the edges that were supposed to be straight to connect the two pieces together. So don't be afraid to improvise. You can extend or elongate the neck bracer on this end. Here I'm cutting out the bevel to try to recreate the straight edge that I didn't make. Now we just have to put the contact cement on both sides, let it dry, and put it together. So here's the neck bracer completed. It's not the best because I messed up on the edge where I was supposed to join the two pieces together. So I'll, I'm going to label that on the new PDF files and upload that onto my Etsy shop. Okay, and that's it for the neck bracers. If you guys want to pick up the pattern, I do have them available on my Etsy shop, so I'll have that in the description down below. If you guys have any other questions on this build, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you guys. And I hope you guys like it. If you like it, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new here and you like to check out my other videos, definitely subscribe to my channel and check them out. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.